Hello and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I am so happy you are here. My name is Susan and this channel is Road Reads and today is a check-in since last we spoke to update you on what I've been reading. I have a new new release to talk to you about and another ancient classic and also what I'm going to be reading for the rest of June. So everything in this video just makes me really happy. So the first book I want to tell you about I read last night as in I started it last night and I finished it last night. So around 5 p.m. yesterday I started reading Julie Clark's most recent release just came out on Tuesday, The Lies I Tell. So in a video, maybe my last video or the one before, I talked about her previous thriller, The Last Flight, and I told you I devoured it. And this one I read even faster. So since Bill has retired, I don't spend my evenings reading every night like I used to. When he was working, he was out of town most of the time. I essentially lived by myself most of the year. And what I would do around 5 or 6 p.m. on almost every evening, I would get my book and I would read until I went to sleep. Almost every night. But apparently when uh, your spouse is home, that's kind of rude. So since he's retired, I have not been doing that. Uh, we, we, we try to spend time together in the evenings, but I wanted to make an ex exception last night and I did with this new thriller. It's good guys. So we have two main characters, both female, just like with The Last Flight, but I felt like it did, had a different tone. It had a different feel to it than The Last Flight. So which you're going to prefer, I think it could go either way. If you've read both, let me know in the comments. I would like to know which one you preferred. Now this just came out on Tuesday, so if you've already read this one, you are on top of things. But our two main characters are Meg and Kat. Kat is a reporter, Meg is a con artist, but with like a Robin Hood kind of approach. And 10 years prior, Meg unwittingly did something that deeply affected Kat's life for the worse. So Meg the con artist unwittingly did something to Kat the reporter that affected Kat's life for the worse. And Kat has been building up this vengeance within her over these 10 years. She's a reporter, so she would like to do an expose on Meg about these cons that she has been doing time after time after time. But things will take several twists through this story. If you enjoy thrillers, I say give this one a try for sure. If it is something I read literally in one sitting last night from 5 till about 10.45 at night, so just shy of six hours, that's got to be a pretty good book, wouldn't you agree? Uh, again, just came out on Tuesday, so uh, it's fun for me to be, I'm trying to do more re new releases. I want to be more in the know. But this next book I'm going to talk about, not a new release, <laughs> came out... Uh, what, 2,000 years ago? <laughs> so here we are with Ovid's Metamorphosis. So just to put things in perspective, so Homer wrote, if indeed he wrote, let's just say the Odyssey and the Iliad predate Ovid and Virgil by about 800 years. So there's quite a difference in that. Now, Virgil and Ovid, they're, Virgil is older, but they were alive at the same time. They're both artist under uh, Augustus's rule. So Ovid met Metamorphosis, why it's called Metamorphosis is because there's a change in a person. So a human becomes a tree, a human becomes an owl, a human becomes a frog. So that's why it's called Metamorphosis. 
If you are intimidated because this is an ancient Roman poet writing, don't be. It was very readable. It's more intimidating because of the length. I devoted a lot of time this month to Metamorphosis, and I pretty much don't regret a minute. There were times when perhaps my eyes glossed over, but that was few and far between and mostly at the very end. <laughs> For the most part, it was just a sheer delight for me. Now I'm into all this stuff. So if you're not into Greek and Roman mythology, you probably don't have a need in your life to read Ovid's Metamorphosis. I of course would recommend it to anyone who's interested in books because so like Shakespeare, you know, took from Ovid so much is derivative of these ancient classics, as I've said ad nauseum. So I'll just shut up about all of that. But um, this, this was, um, I don't want to say I was surprised at how much I, I loved it because I, I knew that this would mean so much to me because basically it's an encyclopedia of, of the myths from creation to Caesar. <laughs> So Caesar's beyond the myths, but um, it, it, so so many of the stories I knew, and then so many of them I didn't. There it is just jam packed with myth after myth after myth. Am I going to remember all these myths from one reading? No. Am I going to remember the names? No. I wish I could do university all over again, be an ancient classics student. That would just be the best. But um, this is not going to be the only time I read Metamorphosis. This is something you read again and again and again, and you're going to get more and more and more out of it. I'll be quiet because I've been talking a lot about the ancient classics <laughs> this month, and I want to tell you I'm so excited for my next two books to take me out of June. So today is June 22nd. So what we have like uh, six more days in the month of June. This one I told you about Riley Sager's The House Across the Lake. In the marketing for this book they had me at hello because the marketing says it is a rear window but in a different setting. Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock starring Jimmy Stewart and Grace Kelly is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's probably in my top three. One day I really need to make a list of my top movies, but I love Rear Window, the movie. If you haven't watched it, oh my gosh, watch it. But so to put that in the marketing for a new thriller, hello, of course, of course I have to read this. So I'm really excited about that. I had pre-ordered it, so it is now, it is now on my Kindle. And then the other book I want to read, I have been saving this for summer and summer technically started yesterday. I am ready for Ray Bradbury's Dandelion Wine. You may recall if you've watched my videos uh, for a while, I fell in love with Ray Bradbury last year. Uh, I read a biography about him. I had already read Something Wicked This Way Comes, but then I read Fahrenheit 451 last year. I did a special video just on that book because I loved it so much, which I wasn't expecting at the time. I loved it. And now it's time for Dandelion Wine. It has the best description on Goodreads because uh, I was looking to see when it was published. I think it was published 1957. Yes, initially it was published in 1957. And here's the description on Goodreads. The summer of 28 was a vintage season for a growing boy, a summer of green apple trees, mowed lawns, and new sneakers. The description goes on, but just those two sentences, it sounds like all this nostalgia I need. It's Midwestern. This is the most autobiographical of Bradbury's works. So uh, I have really high hopes for it. Maybe I need to notch down my excitement a bit, but I think this is going to be a Susan book. That's my prediction. I will report back and let you know how that turns out. But leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have read any of these books. I would love to hear from you. Let me know if you're interested in the new Julie Clark or Riley Sager book. And if you have something that you're reading that is so quintessentially summer reading, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear that. But that is it for now. And I see you guys again very soon. Bye.